In this video, I will share with you how I built this cheap vacuum pump for under $40 using a water aspirator and also a diaphragm pump, all of which, like I said, I purchased for under $40. I will also go over these three different types of water aspirators, including this glass water aspirator, which can be useful if you're working with some sort of corrosive compounds, but can also be a little bit more expensive, costing around $30, whereas the other ones were about $10. This is a metal water aspirator, it's the standard model, and this is a 3D printed model of the metal water aspirator. I think all of them could potentially work out, but I will explain to you later in the video why I ended up going with the metal water aspirator. In front of me I have everything I'm going to be using in this build, and on the left hand side you'll be able to see some PVC tubing. It's really important that the tubing is 3 eighths of an inch inner diameter. This is because that will fit all of your glass joints if you're actually planning on doing a vacuum distillation, and it will also fit with your water pump. I'm using a diaphragm pump, which you can see here. It's very important that your water pump has similar ratings to your faucets in your house because that's what the aspirator pumps are typically meant to be used with. So make sure that it is rated for between 1 and 2.2 GPM or something like 60 PSI at a minimum. You're also going to want some hose clamps that will fit the diameter of your tubing and this is important so water doesn't come flying out of those gaps in between your tubing and your joints. You're going to tighten them down with a standard screwdriver. Anything will work. Probably you'll have one lying around hopefully. And lastly, to power the pump, you're going to need a standard AC to DC converter. This is the type of thing that's used to power computers and pretty easy to come by. Lastly, you'll just need a couple more things. You're going to need some nuts and bolts. These will be used to fasten your diaphragm pump to the lid of the container that will have your water in it. These are some neck joints that's going to help the tubing be a little bit easier to work with. And while not entirely necessary, I would highly recommend that you pick some up because they're quite cheap and they work well in my opinion. In order to actually connect your pump to the DC power source that you're creating with your adapter, you're going to use these female 12 volt DC power jack adapter connectors. They're pretty cheap again and they're pretty easy to work with. You just loosen the screws on the top and then put the actual cables into them. Pretty straightforward stuff. If you're feeling a little confused or are nervous about being able to find all these specific parts, I'm going to link all of them in the description below and that way you'll be able to find them and make sure you're able to follow along exactly with the video. You'll also be able to help support the channel in the process because they are affiliate links. Without further ado, let's get into the actual build. I started off by marking out the place I wanted to drill holes for all the different screws that were going to hold the motor in place, and then I actually drilled holes into the lid of a bucket. And the bucket I'm using is just your standard Home Depot size bucket. I would personally recommend that you use a one liter bucket though, just because you won't have to use as much water when you're filling it up and it will take up less space. It's just unnecessary to use the bigger bucket. And note that these are machine screws so you're going to just screw on nuts on the back side of this. What you'll be able to notice is that the lid is kind of thick on these Home Depot buckets and you might want to get slightly longer than the ones that I used. I actually linked in the description to the right length, the ones I would use if I were to do it again. Once the machine screw holes were finished, I had to drill a hole that the tubing was going to run through. Technically the hose barb is the part that will actually be going through the hole, but it's still going to be 3 eighths of an inch. I just pushed the hose barb through the hole even though it wasn't quite large enough and it ended up working out just fine. At this point you're going to want to put those hose clamps on and you're going to want to do that before you actually attach it to the diaphragm pump. That's because you're not going to be able to put it on from the other side very easily. I then tightened down all the hose clamps and was ready to actually attach my water aspirator. The first water aspirator I tried was one that I 3D printed. I got this idea from an American Chemical Society publication, and while it seemed like it would be really cool in principle, it ended up not working out. The real issue was all of the support filament that ended up being in the interior of my water aspirator, and it was very difficult to get out. I sort of just used a Phillips head screwdriver and fished around inside of the water aspirator until I thought that I'd gotten all the filament out, but it didn't really work and it's very possible that I actually damaged the interior of the water aspirator. I think this idea could work because it was in their publication, so they probably got it to work somehow. And if I were to try it again, I might change the orientation of the 3D print job so that the water aspirator pump was more vertical instead of being on its side. I might also try printing it in two halves and then gluing it together, that way that the support filament is easy to get out without actually damaging the water aspirator itself. When I actually tested out my 3D printed water aspirator, it was a total disaster. Like I said, water ended up coming out of the vacuum port, which is not a good sign if you couldn't tell already. You can also see 
why you need to have these hose clamps because if you don't water will come flying out of the gaps between the tubing and the actual thing you're trying to connect it to whether that is the pump itself or the water aspirator. The next type of water aspirator I went with was a glass water aspirator and these are commonly used when working with more corrosive compounds. You could also use one that's made out of PVC or some other type of plastic, but since I'd already 3D printed a water aspirator, I decided to go with this just to try out all the different types. And the problem I had with this was that while it did generate a vacuum, it was very weak, and that had to do with the joint sizing. If you look at the vacuum port, you can see that it's much smaller than the end, which is actually 3 eighths of an inch and is the standard joint size for glassware. And this ended up being very problematic, and I think it's the main reason that the vacuum was so weak. I wouldn't recommend that you use this, or if you do use it, that you get one that's the proper size. Another major con with this is the port where the water actually goes in. If you look at it, you can see it's very strangely shaped, and it was difficult to actually get the tubing over that joint, and it was difficult to move it around or take it off, and eventually I decided to just leave the tubing on permanently. When I actually tested this, like I said, the vacuum it generated was pretty weak, and I measured it just by putting my finger over the vacuum port. When I compare this to vacuums I generated in organic chemistry lab during my college years, it was just terrible. I mean, it could maybe be used for something like a vacuum filtration, but as far as distillation is concerned, I wouldn't even tr consider it, you know, it's just definitely not going to work. The last water aspirator I tested was a metal version of the 3D printed model, and it worked the best. After confirming that I was producing some sort of vacuum with my finger, I moved on to something I thought would be fun. I put a gloved hand over a Buchner funnel and watched my glove slowly get sucked into it. I did this because it brought back memories of when I was in college in organic chemistry lab and I did something similar, but my entire glove got sucked into it. This shows that while it did produce a vacuum, it wasn't quite as strong as the ones that were available in my lab during college. On this channel, I explore chemistry through the lens of criminology. My next video I have planned is construction of a fume hood. If you want to see more videos like this, you can feel free to subscribe or take advantage of the fact that this channel is still small and leave a comment asking a question because I will be sure to answer it. Thank you and I hope that this video was helpful for you.